In this video, we're going to relook at our formulas for arc length, area of a sector, and area of a segment now that we're using radian measure. So, as we previously looked at, a radian, the angle theta in radians, is the ratio of the arc length to the radius of the circle that we're dealing with. So in considering this, if we simplify that with our r for radius and l for r length, we've got a nice little formula that's formed here. If we multiply up this r for the radius, we end up with a formula for the length of any arc of a circle in terms of radian measure. And here we have it here. The arc length is the radius times the angle theta in radians. So let's reconsider our formula for area of a sector. So we know when we're looking at a sector, we're looking at part of a circle. So here's an example of a minor sector with an angle theta. And normally we would say, okay, we want the angle out of 360 because that is the fraction of the whole area of the circle we want. But we're dealing with radians, so we don't want to deal with 360 degrees, but we know that one revolution is 360 degrees or two pi radians, so that's really important. So I'm going to replace the 360 with two pi, so two times pi. Now I'm trying to neaten up this formula. I've got theta, I've got times radian square, radius squared, but I'm going to cancel this pi with this one of these pi's, and so I've got a divide two left. So essentially I can say if I'm dealing in radians, my area of a sector formula is I've got a half times r squared times theta. And remembering because they're times, we can put them in any order. And timesing by a half is also the same as dividing by two. So this is the formula when we're dealing with radians and finding the area of a sector. Let's use that idea for the area of a sector to revisit area of a segment. So in my example here, I have a picture for a minor segment. And to find the area of that, we know that we've got to take the whole sector involved and subtract out the triangle that's involved at the circle center. So in considering that, I'm just re-looking at my formula and I've just replaced the first part, area of a sector, with what I'd found previously. Just adjusting that formula because we're dealing in radians. And then I've take re-grabbed my formula for the area of any triangle, which is derived from half AB sine C, area of any triangle. But my AB is my radii. So that's where the r squared comes in. And c is my angle, so essentially we're going to put that as theta. Now what I can do is just make this look a little bit nicer. I can see some common factors. They've both got a half out the front, and they've both got r squared. So I could take a factor of a half r squared out the front, and in my first term I'm left with the angle theta, subtract the sine of the angle theta. So there's another way that we can simplify that formula. So now we've readjusted our three main formulas, let's have a look at some examples. In our first question we've asked to calculate exactly the length of a major arc. So the major arc is this length I've highlighted in pink. So what I need to find that is my length formula, which is L equals R times theta. But my theta, my angle for my major arc, I don't know, I need to work that out. So if one whole revolution is worth 2 pi, I want to subtract this smaller angle of 4 pi on 9. So a bit of quick thinking work with equivalent fractions. I'm going to rewrite 2 pi as 18 pi on 9. 
so that I've got a denominator of 9 and I'm going to subtract 4 pi on 9 that leaves me an angle that I'm dealing with of 14 pi on 9. So let's have a go. The length of this major arc is the radius 4 times 14 pi on 9. So that gives me 59 pi on 9 and that's in centimetres. So let's just adjust that. So let's go back and just readjust the fact that 14 times 4 is actually 56. Got nines on my mind. So I've got 56 pi on 9 centimetres. And what's it exactly? So I don't have to work that out as a decimal. I'm just going to think to myself, do 56 and 9 have any common factors? But they don't, so that's the simplest that I can write that in. So looking at our second situation, we want to find the area that's shaded. So having a look at part A, I've got a circle with a radius of 53 and I've got an angle of 1.9 radians. I want to find the shaded area and that's a minor segment. So I've got that on my mind that I'm going to have to find the area of the whole sector subtract the triangle. Now I can remember that I simplified a formula there earlier for the area of a segment. So in feeling the, and that segment is covered by that 1.9 radians as the angle, so my theta is 1.9. So popping this in, I've got half times 53 squared multiplied by 1.9 radians take the sine of 1.9. Now I'm going to get a decimal answer and making sure that my calculator is in radians. I'm going to input this and I'm going to get 1,339.47 square millimetres and that's to two decimal places. So there's my solution. So what I'd like you to do now is have a look at 2B. In particular, before you jump in, we can identify that yes, we know the radius is 8. We have got an angle theta which is pi on 3, but that's for the, the what I can see as a minor sector there. Whereas my shading is actually on, well, it's more than just this major sector. It's actually covering a major sector and a triangle. So I want you to think about how would you go about finding the area of all those shaded regions. You, in radians, you're using um, our formulas that we have adjusted for radian measure. Second thing I'd like you to have a look at question 3, saying that a major sector of a circle has a radius of 24 and that major sector has an area of 1,440 square centimetres. Knowing that, can you determine the length of that arc? So well, length of an arc is just r times theta, but of course we're going to have to know our angle theta in radians. So we'll debrief on those two questions in our upcoming lesson.